This is the ultimate beginner's guide for house music producers getting into production using FL Studio. And by the end of this tutorial, together we will have made this. Now I've broken it down into five episodes, this being the very first, starting with the very basics. I want you to go ahead and open FL Studio. It should look something like this. It should in default open with this thing in front of you. This is called the playlist and we will go through it in just one moment. If you were a chef, this would be your plate. All of your composition happens on here. This is your final design. All right, now before I go into all the functions of the playlist, let's look at the top bar right here. Pretty self-explanatory buttons. When you're on song mode, you can press play to start the song and you can press pause to stop the song where it was playing. If you wanna return to the start, you can press the stop button. Now, see this pattern thing up here? Don't worry about it yet, we'll go into it later. For now, ensure you're on song mode. It should be green right there. We're going to look at this number here, 130. At least when I open FL Studio, it starts on 130. We are making house music. House music as part of electronic dance music ranges usually between 120 to 130 beats per minute. Beats per minute is the measurement of tempo. And tempo is what people dance to. When people listen and feel music, they feel the beats per minute. We, for the sake of this tutorial, are gonna be in 128 beats per minute. So let's break down the playlist. Like I said, it is what this big thing is, this main component that's taking up your screen, and you can toggle it using this first button here. These right here are your tracks. Everything you will be putting onto your plate will be on different tracks. For example, your kick, your clap, your hat, the bass line, the sub, etc. The vocal, FX layers, FX layers too. And you can isolate or solo by right clicking one of them and right clicking to unsolo them. You can also mute by left clicking them. So I could mute one and three if I wanted to. I could mute five and six. We're gonna talk about the tools. All of these things up here are the tools. So starting with the draw tool. The draw tool is the tool you'll be using 90% of the time. This is what you'll use to put anything down. See right now, as a default, when I left click anywhere on the playlist here on any of these tracks, it places down a pattern. But it's just a demonstration of how when I left click somewhere, that's exactly where the beginning of what I'm clicking will be placed. If I right click it, it goes away. If I left click it, it appears. When you hover over it, you can simply hold down left click and you can drag it anywhere you want, any different track, any timing, right at the beginning if you wanted. How am I zooming in and out? I am using a mouse. So what I'm doing is I'm holding down command, I'm using a Mac, holding it down and then I'm scrolling with my scroll wheel. All right, that's how I'm zooming in and out. Okay, so I'm gonna right click to delete that. So that was the draw tool. Then we have the paint tool. No, no one ever uses the paint tool, but I wanna show it to you anyway. The paint tool is like the draw tool, except I can continuously put more down. I don't know why you would ever wanna do that because you can simply go back to the draw tool, delete all of these, right? You can just place one down, select it, copy paste, drag it over, copy paste, drag it over. I guess in a certain way, paint can be faster sometimes, all right? But now I'm going into the specifics of the draw tool and how to use it faster. If I had this right here and I wanted to instantly duplicate it and place it over, I just shift, hold shift, click, and I copy and drag another way. Shift and click. What I can also do, I can just select it and then command B to instantly duplicate it at the end point of the previous part. That would be my fastest way to do all that but this will come into play when we start the production in the next episode everything will make sense when you get to start using these tools we have the delete tool you do not need to use this one because you can simply go on draw and right click to delete so the delete tool is pretty much useless unless for some reason your mouse doesn't have a right click or your computer's broken in any way we have a mute tool which is very useful as you remember we can mute the whole tracks but maybe we don't want to mute the entire track Maybe we just want to mute a segment of the track. So say we had this. I can mute the entire thing by pressing the light button there. Or I can go on to mute and I can say I don't want the second one. I can then left click on that and it is muted. So we've got the one playing, the two not playing, the three and the four playing. I can then left click again 
to enable it. Slip, we will ignore for now. Slip is a tool that we do not need to use. Slice, one of the most important tools. With slice, you can cut anywhere, anything, wherever you like. I hope that makes sense. If I wanted to cut this pattern one in the middle, I can drag right in the middle and it now created two pattern ones. Now, it's not a duplicate of the one. It is exactly the second half. So it's not like this beginning bit will be the same as this beginning bit. Don't be confused. This is the first half and this is the second half. It's just that I've sliced it in two. For a sort of graphic interpretation, if you take a tree, this is the tip of the tree, this is the bottom of the tree, and I slice it in half. These are now not two trees. This is the top half of the tree and this is the bottom half of the tree. And if I go ahead and move the bottom half of the tree over here, but then I duplicate the top half of the tree over, this is now two top halves of a tree and a bottom half of a tree. The select tool. If by chance your command button doesn't work, this does the same as the command button. Now zoom. For a quick zoom in and out, you can left click anywhere you like. Playback is a very fun little tool. You can just click anywhere you like and it starts playing the song from that point. But there is no song yet, so this does not matter right now. All right, guys, we're done going through the tools. It's important to know what all these tools do and the shortcuts, because when we actually get into music production, this is gonna save you so much time and pain, and all the time and pain is gonna make you lose passion in your idea. We're gonna go through the next couple of things in the playlist. We've got the pickers over here. All right, we've got picker patterns, picker audio clips, and picker automation clips. Because this is an empty song, we don't actually have anything in here yet, but this allows you to switch between tabs. So everything below here, this gray area, is exactly what this is choosing. So here are all of our automation clips, of which we have none. Here are all of our audio clips, samples, of which we have none. And here are all of our patterns, of which we have one, pattern one, okay? These are just the pickers to let you choose between patterns, audio clips, and automation clips. We're now gonna go through the focus modes. You've got the focus mode pattern clips. You will not really ever need to use this. All right, so let's move on to the automation clips focus mode. And then now the audio clips focus mode. The only important thing here in audio clips focus mode, in my opinion, you can enable fade editing controls. I have this on all the time and you can use stretch audio. Stretch audio is that when you have an audio file or a sample, if you have stretch mode on and you drag the end of the sample over, instead of extending the emptiness behind the sample, you're actually stretching the sample out, which sounds intuitive, right? It's, it feels like if you were to drag the end of a, a, a sample out, it would, you know, stretch. You would stretch it out like in Photoshop, like you're doing with photo editing, right? However, when this is not selected, when it's off and I go ahead and stretch it, instead of stretching it, I'm taking that empty space at the end and making more empty space. I'm just letting you know now what this does. When we get into the actual production, you'll see what it does. It will make a lot more sense. Now I'm gonna show you the pattern, okay? Finally, we're gonna go about the pattern. I'm gonna drag pattern one back in here. I'm not gonna rename it or anything. Now, how do we go into the pattern? Because believe it or not, it's a whole new interface. Remember that this one, this button here, enables the playlist view and off. The one next to it will enable the viewing of the piano roll. The one next to that will view your channel rack. The channel rack is the control of the patterns. I don't know why they didn't just call it like pattern rack or whatever, but it's called the channel rack. So if I go ahead and press channel rack, it's gonna open up the channel rack for pattern one. This right here is pattern one. You understand? This channel rack is pattern one. We can then switch view modes. So right now we are in the piano roll mode, which is why it's just gray. There's nothing there. We can switch on the step sequencer. This is the famous FL Studio look. This is what everyone recognizes. For fun, we're gonna experiment with this right now. We will not be using it for the song, but for fun, just to see what you're doing. And this is infamous for making everybody's first ever beat. This step sequencer, literally just have fun. Use your left click on any of these buttons here to enable or disable. Right now, if I press play, remember that we are in the song and it is now looping. 
that part of pattern one. So let's press on the first kick, the second kick, the third kick and the fourth kick. This is the fundamental of house music. You don't want to mess with this too much more. I could go ahead and put a second kick here. And I know you will be tempted to do so, but it does not make any sense. This is made for simplicity's sake. So you see how we've put four little dots here and then now four dots appear inside of pattern one on our playlist. See the cross functionality there? I'm gonna layer every second kick. So one, two, one, two, every second kick with a clap. Here's what that sounds like. Very nice. Lastly, we've got this hat here. I'm gonna put that between every single kick and clap, what we call the offbeat. One, two, three. Now, I won't lie to you, this beat is the most famous FL Studio beat. Everyone has made this beat before. Now you understand what the channel rack is, which is what the pattern is, pattern one. So I'm gonna close this and it's gonna remain right here. Now let's use what we learned before to extend this. So if I were to select this, then press command B, or if I delete that again, and I press command C and V, it is now duplicated. I just have to drag it over or I can hold shift and click to duplicate it and drag it over, right? Now we've got two playing after each other. Cool. We're gonna go ahead and do something crazy here. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new pattern. I'm gonna call it pattern two. I'm gonna drag it over here. When we go into pattern two's channel rack, which is how we do that, make sure it says pattern two here, press channel rack and you open it up. If it says pattern one and you press channel rack, Bada bing, bada boom, you open channel one's channel rack, right? Pattern one's channel rack. So make sure we're on pattern two, press channel rack, and there we go. We now have a new empty channel rack. We can do this again here if we wanted to. If I duplicate this one over two. Right, so check it out. We're gonna use our soloing knowledge now. Solo track one. Solo track two. Put them both together. There we go. All right, sounds bad, but I'm just demonstrating something here. If I wanted to duplicate pattern one, I like it a lot and I want to duplicate it and make it a little bit different. I make sure I have another pattern one here. The problem is if I were to make a change to this pattern one, it makes a change to both pattern ones. They are not unique. Therefore, one change affects all of the pattern ones. What we're gonna do is press this little piano icon here with the left click. Opens up all of these options. We're gonna go to make unique. If I press make unique, we now have a new pattern two. It's gonna get a bit confusing. This pattern two here is unique, right? So we're gonna call it pattern three, all right? Now pattern three is what we made before. Pattern two is a duplicate of pattern one. But now if we make changes to pattern two, it does not affect pattern one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, right there is your patterns. We're moving on to our next major chapter here, guys. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and open what's called the mixer with this fourth button over here. Super famous look. Everyone knows what this is. They don't know how to use it. If I now have the mixer open and the channel rack open, conveniently pretty small, so I can have them both open, right? Let's take a look here at all these numbers on the left. Our kick is playing this. Our clap is playing this. Our hat is playing this. And our snare is empty, so it's not playing anything. These numbers correlate to the numbers on the mixer. All right, so one is going right here. Two is going right here. Three is going right here. And now check this out. If I were like, I wanted to solo the hat, I don't have to go into the channel rack and just solo the actual thing here. I can just solo the insert on the mixer channel. You can see that the kick and the clap are playing, but they're muted. The mixer in your, in your chef scenario, the mixer is what decides how much of your ingredients go onto the final plate. The plate here is your composition, it's your playlist, yes? But what is the volume of your ingredients? That's what the mixer decides. I wanna go through some basics here. You've got one, two, three, basically right now, the kick, clap, and hat. All of these, you can see this little green wire from down here. It's going down and it's going in 
to the master. Two is going into the master, three is going into the master. The master is what your headphones hear. You see right here, if I click on master, it says output, audio one and two, that's my left and right side headphones. Pretty simple. We're gonna go into proper music production and mixing in the next episode, all right? I'm proud to say that you guys have finished the first course, the first episode, the first module of this tutorial. By the end of this, like I said, we'll be making something really cool. I know it's hard to believe because of the sounds we've just picked, but in the next episode, we're gonna get into music production, okay? You guys just needed to know how to use the DAW that's in front of you, how to use FL Studio. I'll see you in the next episode. It will also come up on screen right here. Episode two, peace.